everybody. Happy March 2022. We are here with Lawrenceburg Public Library uh, celebrating the year of stones and crystals and for the month of March our stone or crystal or technically mineral is aquamarine. So first we want to thank the friends of the library, the Lawrenceburg Public Library for sponsoring your take and make it kits and your year of stones and crystals and most importantly you for expressing interest in registering and coming in and checking out your um, cool stones and crystals kits among many other lovely things that the library has to offer. So aquamarine um, is named after two Latin words put together to make the um, total word aqua and marine. So we're probably already pretty familiar with aqua meaning water, right, and marine meaning sea. So the two Latin words put together mean aquamarine that represent the color of the sea or sea water. Um, and so since we're mostly probably familiar with aquamarine, we could see where they would um, derive this name because in hue and folklore, the stone or the mineral, right, um, has varying shades of blue and green. It's generally translucent. It cuts in fast as well and it has been prized as a gemstone since way back historically. The, the Romans, the um, Egyptians, certainly the sailors, uh, you know, English um, prized royalty. Every historical account that we can find somehow incorporates the aquamarine into its either jewelry or folk ore. Um, and so it was commonly used, most commonly um, since ancient times for sailors and they used it as an amulet while at sea. So it was said to help protect them at sea and keep them safe and give them the courage and strength they needed to complete such long journeys. Um, so oftentimes you'll see it in a lot of um, mariner and sailor and sea art and jewelry um, and intertwined with like anchors and in sailboats and ships and mermaid art and it's deeply entwined with the association of sailors, the ocean, the sea, and as a safety amulet for protection. And to touch back on it again, its true name is beryl or beryl, however you would want to say it, which is a mineral that is mined. Um, and aquamarine uh, kind of is sort of a byproduct of mining for the mineral. Aquamarine itself is considered a semi-precious stone and next month when we discuss our April um, birth stone and April uh, quartz crystal, we'll talk about the difference between precious and semi-precious stones. Technically only four stones are considered truly precious. Um, it's the traditional birthstone for the month of March, which happens to be my birthstone, and it's also the traditional 19th wedding, wedding anniversary gift. So um, when you go back into like old traditional and traditional wedding anniversary gifts, the 19th year was you were supposed to present either an aquamarine stone or crystal piece of jewelry or like a piece of cutter faceted glass that was the seawater hue to represent the aquamarine. And I know I already said it once, but I'm going to repeat it again because there's loads and loads of lure as known as the stone of mermaids. And they, they were used to um, lure them in. I see I spelled lure incorrectly. I'm going to correct it real quick. Um, so a lot of times, sailors at sea, right, oftentimes we think maybe they confused manatees or other uh, sea creatures would kind of get delirious and visualize or see mermaids. And then they would use, the stories would say, they would make jewelry or make amulets or hold the aquamarines up on the edges of the seas and the, sh the sea um, shore and the ships to try to lure the mermaids in closer so they could have a better look at them. Um, so this is sort of fun for like fairy gardens and mermaids. It's fun to make mermaid soaps. That's an idea where you put an aquamarine in the center of like a glycerin soap in the shape of a mermaid for um, adults and children alike, but little girls in particular to have like a mermaid party or something. It's a really fun way to incorporate it in. The metaphysical properties for the stone or the mineral of aquamarine are cleansing and purification, and that would kind of go hand in hand with seawater and the ocean, right, to cleanse and purify, and the um, incorporation of the salt as well. And it's traditionally known as the stone of courage. So when you look up the properties or aquamarine, it's oftentimes coined as the stone of courage. Um, and so it was to give bravery, strength, power, and um, keep you on the up and up for uh, cleansing and purification for long journeys at sea and other amulets of protection 
and to, um, like I said, kind of lure in metaphysical or mystical creatures that you wanted to look at closer to yourself. An idea that we've been doing at the shop, as we said, we were going to start to introduce really um, kind of broad ideas on how you would incorporate your year of stones and crystals into just daily life and your, your home routine as we've made um, a lot of soy wax candles with the wooden wick, now this one needs to be trimmed, and we put in the birthstone um, inside the candle. And so it's a really fun way to umph your soy wax candle, and you've seen probably maybe on Instagram or Facebook, they're making the popular birthstone um, or birthday candles now where you order them and then they put that person's astrological sign and a few traits or, or historical facts that happened from that day in history on their birthday and then the birthstone incorporated into the candle. Well, there's certainly not any reason why you couldn't do this yourself. You could also incorporate the stones in for different chakras and make your own chakra or metaphysical candle. But what you do is you use 100% um, vegetable-based soy wax, so that's highly important because other waxes wouldn't be functional for this idea. And then we're kind of hooked on the wooden wicks right now, but nice cotton wicks are great too. And then you would pour your candle about, this is how we do it, but you would probably um, have another method or idea. A lot of people like to rest their stones right on top. We like to make it kind of like a prize. So we'd anchor our wick and we would pour our melted soy wax just about halfway up, maybe, I don't know, 40% up, and then let it harden. It solidifies and hardens rather quickly, probably within a half hour, 20 minutes. And then we drop the uh, stone, mineral, crystal, or gem into the jar. And then we basically sandwich or layer it and then we top it with the rest of the wax. And one thing that's important, again, I'm going to reiterate, is that you would use soy wax. If I think of it, I'll burn this and I'll bring it next month for April and show you um, how it looks when it's emptied and burned down. And the soy wax is a clean burn, so it doesn't soot and it evaporates and pretty much dissipates as it burns. So your end and, um, result is a nearly empty jar. So when you use your soy candle, and then you've got your cool stone crystal or mineral embedded in there, as the soy wax cleans and dissipates into the air and burns down, you have like a little treasure trinket or gift left behind, and in this case it would be the aquamarine, right? So it's a really fun way if you already like the candle crafting idea and you're kind of looking for a new idea or a spin, um, to do it or if you just want to make a customized gift and you've looked online and you've seen that the birthday candles are about $25 or $30 you could make your own or kind of make that your uh, present for everyone in your family um, you could just get really creative with it you can also color or dye your wax to coordinate or match up with the stone or crystal so if we wanted to we could put a mica or a wax dye in that would be this really pretty aquamarine color and pair up the wax along with the stone or crystal. So again, we're just trying to throw out ideas. Last month we talked about the concept of elixirs and raising vibrational content of water and drink. This would be the same idea with your candle and just kind of taking it up a notch with the candle making craft. So in conclusion, the year of stones and crystals for March 2022 was aquamarine known as the Stone of Courage and the traditional birthstone for the month of March, um, named for the two Latin words that mean water and sea for its beautiful sea-like hues and colors. And next month for the um, month of April, the traditional birthstone for the month of April is diamond. So for obvious reasons, we're not going to have that in our kits to hand out. But we'll talk about Herkimer diamonds and a beautiful crystal clear quartz point and probably a tumbled stone too because they're a little bit more affordable than some of our other specimens and it's pretty likely that you'll get a tumbled and a raw point. And we'll talk about the quartz crystal and its diamond-like qualities and attributes and look and aesthetic. And then um, that's pretty much it. So enjoy the month of March and happy spring. I wish we could talk about the bangles but we can't so I won't bring it up anymore. <laughs> And I'll see everybody next month, April, for um, Quartz Crystal.